The thing is when we tap into the power of our bodies knowing, we can unhook it from the head. So I have even realized things and I've helped women realize things and I don't use manifest because this is not law of attraction. This is not, you know, universal, it's none of that. So I help women realize things by tapping into the power of the body's knowing, disconnecting it from your mindset and your mental, your mental hustle and, and head. So you could even be not in the best of moods or state and st still you're still receiving things that you desire. Welcome to Powerhouse Women, the podcast for women who know they are ready for more. I'm Lindsay Schwartz, your host and the founder of Powerhouse Women, and together we'll unlock the confidence and clarity you are looking for to help you get out of your own way and into action around your next big idea. Before we get into today's episode, I have some really exciting news to share with you. If you didn't already see, our famous Powerhouse Women event is back for 2021. And I'm so excited, I can barely sleep. This is a day of inspiration, connection, and real conversations about what it takes to bring a big idea to life. You do not need to have a business in order to attend. This is really a day for anyone who is looking Looking to expand and grow in their career, their business, their life. They're looking to connect with like-minded women who will genuinely support them and who believes that we're just not meant to do business or life alone. So something tells me if you listen to this podcast, those three things describe you. Um, this year, we're going to have a virtual and an in-person option. So if you cannot travel, are not ready to travel, we've got you covered. But if you want to be in that room live, here's what you need to know. There are going to be limited tickets available, and we are already over 50% sold out. Depending on when you hear this, we may or may not have tickets left. So if you know you want to be in that room with us in Scottsdale, Arizona, September 10th and 11th, you need to go to powerhousewomenevent.com, grab your ticket, plug into this global community of women, and I cannot wait to see you there. Now let's get to today's episode. Welcome back to the podcast. I am getting to share with you today a dynamic woman that I had the pleasure of meeting through some mutual friends, Chris and Jen, who are the founders of Super Connector Media. We met on this Zoom call and I have to tell you, and I, I think I told you this, Zara, when we first connected your presence was so undeniable. And when I found out that you were the CEO of something called the high value woman, I was like, I don't even know what that is. And I need to know this is clearly someone who I need to have in my life. So I'm so honored to have you here with me today. Thank you, Lindsay. I'm so excited here to be here today as well. Thank you for having me. I am really, really honored to get to spend this girl time with you. It's going to be just as juicy as last time. So <laughs> I know we, we did, we connected on a zoom call just to get to know one another. So curious about like what each, each other's passions and lines of work were. And it was probably about five minutes into that conversation and hearing your story that I was like, um, we're, we're going to need to record a podcast because you are such a wealth of information. Your story is incredible. But what I want to point out is, and you're going to all hear this as we get into this conversation, you are such a permission grantor. And I know that that is a big foundation of the work that you now do, but I'm just telling everyone listening, get ready. Like this is not, I don't think this is a podcast you sit and listen to passively. You're going to be leaning in and wanting more. And if you apply some of the things we're going to talk about, I know it's going to radically shift some things in your life. So um, no pressure whatsoever. Right. But <laughs> I, I actually would love, I want to know how did you come up with this concept that you've trademarked, you've built your, you know, your business around of the high value woman? What does that mean to you? And, and really, where was that born? Wow, that is an amazing question, Lindsay. And we could actually be here for a day talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, however, since we don't have a day, I'll try to do the Cliff Notes version. So where was that born? Well, you know what I, I feel? I, I think even 
you know, any woman who has a movement she started who is supporting women, whatever that's about, she started out as the opposite. So I was mm-hmm. actually the lowest value, meaning, and what I mean by that is that you know, every woman innately has value as a human being, as a woman, but I was not behaving that way. I was in my, uh, I was like 19, I was allowing men to cheat on me and I was just not really living life on my terms. I was not being a high value woman. And one night, um, how it really started when I look back all these years, years you know, late, uh, later, is I walked in, this is why I hate, I hate reality shows, Lindsay. Mm-hmm. I walked in on my boyfriend in bed with another woman. Like it sounds like a soap opera. Right. Uh, and, or reality show. And that's why I hate them. That, that was my life at that moment. And that's when, and I had this kind of divine kind of moment. Um, and I just said, that's it. And I ended up on going on, I was at university at the time. So I ended ended up having a two-year mancation in my tribe. I call it a mancation. Sometimes as a woman entrepreneur, you got a business, you just have to have a mancation to, to focus sometimes. So I focused on myself. I started, uh, you know, and I'm the opposite of many coaches out there. I'm not even a coach. I'm a mentor and an activator, but I just poured into myself. I started reading books. I started traveling. Um, I didn't go and take every course known to man out there. And matter of fact, I never have taken a course on men and yet I attract the most amazing high quality men. That's another story. Mm -hmm. But so I took those two years, really, really invested in my education and focusing on who did I want to become. And that's where that all started. And then then the next step was a one-way ticket to somewhere, but I think I'll hold that for later just in, if, in, in case. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's so much to unpack from your experiences. And the, one of the things that I was so struck by the first time we connected was this idea. You're really the first person I've met who is truly living as like a citizen of the world. So you've lived in some amazing places. Right now you live in Mexico what inspired you to go on that journey? And, and tell me a little bit, cause you've shared with me one-on-one about the value of that and what that can add to our lives. So tell me a little bit about that. Sure. So apparently Lindsay, when I was eight years old, I told my parents that when I grow up, I'm going to move to Paris and be a fashion designer. I actually did both of those <laughs> later Amazing. on. I, I don't remember saying that, but apparently I did. Uh, but from a young age, I had this obsession with, with, with France and with Europe and just with so many things. And then I am a daughter of immigrants. I'm a third culture kid. So I, I had that very unique culture. I was born and raised in the U.S., but I have this very British, Caribbean, South American, you know, family uh, and influence. And my dad, you know, is the, one of the most intrepid men who came to the country with, uh, I think he had like $300. We know the immigrant story then brought my, my brother and my mother's and I was born there. So it's all, it's like I had it in my blood. I feel like I really had it in my blood. And then when I was eight, nine, 10, I started watching these, these shows, these um, kind of documentaries on France and learning the language the, and you know, just teaching myself there. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I, you know, and I'll, I'll stop with the story there about how what happened next after the mancation that kind of leads into my first, uh, you know, moving abroad and living abroad and traveling. But, you know, going to answer the rest of your, your question about the, the richness of living as a global citizen, I can't even begin to tell you how much that really transforms a woman. Like, I can't imagine if I had not bought that one-way ticket to wherever I went, right? <laughs> and and um, all these years later, I've lived in eight countries, 20, 20 something years later, just over 20 years later. And I've met so many people, had such rich experiences. And I'm all about living a lovely, powerful, rich, luxurious life and really full immersion as opposed to laptop, the laptop lifestyle or digital nomad. Like that's not me. And kudos to anyone if that's what they want to do. But I, I started living like this and living slow living, really, you know, in immersing myself in the culture, learning the language, learning the customs, making friends, making sure I didn't have any uh, people who were around me who spoke English. I really, really immersed. And 
it has, I have so many skills from that that have literally turned into a mint and gold mine later. You know, if we, if we have, if you have daughters, please send them abroad, start to have them learn languages, really open up their eyes because they're going to have an amazing, amazing life and opportunities that they wouldn't have if they just stay at home. That's so powerful. And I mean, I would, I would love to pour a a glass of wine and hear the whole list, but if you were to give like one, one example of something that you've taken away from this this lifestyle you've created for yourself or a lesson you've learned, if you have a favorite, what would that, what would it be? Okay. Yeah. (laughs) That's not a small ask, right? Um, So, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, a a term I've trade, I've, I've trademarked and I'm writing about, and it's called cross-cultural fluidity. I actually created that cross-cultural fluidity say that five times fast. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't even say, I can't, can't even say it twice slowly. Uh, however, that's one of the things that I learned in living in all these countries, not just like, you know, setting up your laptop and traveling through or meeting a few people, but really immersing and living, learning the language, speaking the people, you really get to understand how to connect with people. Um, another thing that I, because I was able to do that, I have this knack for connecting with very influential people from ambassadors to CEOs. And it's, it's really easy for me to do that. I can speak to anyone, the guy, you know, here on the beach selling coconuts or the guy who is the president of chamber of commerce with whom I know all of them and I'm friends, you know? So I think that living as that global citizen, like that's the, the main thing for me is having this cross cultural fluidity, not just between nations, but between cultures, between races, between cities, right? Because between, you know, socioeconomic uh, levels, everything, it's just, that is, that's, that's, it's amazing. That is one of the most powerful things I have gained. I mean, that alone is beyond valuable. If we really think about like what that, how that could impact any of our lives. I mean, where do you, I'm, I'm going to move on in a minute to some of the profound work that you do, but here, I'm going to ask this kind of on behalf of someone who may be listening, thinking, okay, well, I'm not in a position or for whatever reason, I'm not going to move abroad. How can someone get like a taste of that just in in the first, like, what's the first step toward that? If someone's not going to pick up tomorrow, move abroad, have the full experience, although maybe they will, but those that aren't like, is it just through travel? Is it through going on solo trips? What would, what would you say? Yes. Yes. And yes. <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because I love one of my favorite things to talk about is luxury solo travel for female entrepreneurs and and using that as a vehicle or should I say um, as an airplane right for transformation Mm -hmm. using it for transformation of your life so they don't have to you know they don't have to be as intrepid as I am and just go move abroad and move to different countries on their own they can start with a weekend trip they can start with a week what I suggest they do Um, If so, first of all, if they have that option to at least go somewhere, take at least two weeks and go to a city that you have just been drawn to. And if you don't know what that is, just go online and just start, you know, it doesn't matter. You could say Asia, great cities in Asia or great cities in Europe or great cities, you know, great places to visit in South America. So they just kind of look that up and start, something will jump out. You know, I ask, ask your, ask your mind, ask your subconscious. I like to say genius, ask her, you know, where do I want to go? What do you, what, what experience do I want to have? I want to have fun. Where are you going to show me, show me somewhere. And trust me, as you search, as you start to talk to talk to people, something's going to show up and a pattern is going to show up. And I say, go somewhere for two weeks. I personally don't go anywhere for less than a month, but that's just me. Um, go for at least two weeks. Do not, do not do the American thing. Like my oldest brother, he's a doctor and he does the American thing. <laughs> and what I mean by that, <clears throat> he'll go and he has a whole list. Like I had lived in Rome and Rome and London and Paris. And he asked me for a list of all the things to see. I was like, oh my gosh, please don't do that. You need to experience, <laughs> not see, but experience. So make sure you go 
in two weeks, maybe you can take a couple of day trips around, but sit down, sit at the co coffee shops, take your journal, get to know yourself, speak to the people, take a lang take a, a, a crash course in the language. Oh yes, for goodness sakes, please have respect for the country as a global citizen and learn 10 words in the language, mm -hmm. <laughs> at least, mm -hmm. you know, really speak the language, uh, start connecting with people beforehand. There's so many global um, organizations. I belong to several global organizations that are, are travelers or expats. Connect with people before you even go. And once you get there, another tip, do not speak to anyone who speaks the same language as you, if you can help it. So good. Oh so my goodness. I'll start there. That's a lot. I know. I <laughs> no, it's, it's perfect though, because we're already starting to unpack a conversation about possibility and it's, it's no coincidence that we're connecting for this conversation when we are. I've been really leaning into this, really leaning into like, where do I just keep myself in the same patterns and then somehow expect different results in my life or business? And it, funny enough, I've actually been really all of a sudden tuned into some kind of a solo travel experience. So you're inspiring me. I know someone else out there needs to hear this too. And I'll, I can't wait to share where I decide to take that solo trip. Ooh, yes. So uh, you, you do some of the most profound work of really of, of anyone I've had a ch the honor of connecting with and specifically with a demographic of women who could appear to others, like they've got a lot going for them. What do you find that it is about this, this demographic of women you work with, you know, maybe they've achieved financial success or other outward success, but yet there's something that still is, is missing or locked away, or like you so eloquently said, that needs to be activated. What do you think leads to that? Like what gets us to that point? I think just purely being fed up, <laughs> fed up with doing things the same way you've always done them, fed up with the same results you're getting, fed up with having created a life where you feel boxed in, or someone told you to, or someone said, hey, do this profession, or you followed what your parents said, or you did the logical thing. Let's say it's not even the parents, Lindsay. Say um, you have these options. I could be a musician, and but mom said, no, you can't make money that. I could be an accountant, right? <laughs> and then you say, well, they make good money, or that kind of thing. This reminds me, one of the women that I worked with, she was a British woman, a doctor from, uh, from London, um, and we had a VIP day when I was living in Rome, she flew into Rome and this is basically what, what one of her challenges was. And she was stuck. She's like 10, 15 years later, I don't want to be a doctor. Mm. <laughs> I kind of did it to satisfy my family. I thought I could make myself love it. I mean, there's so many women super, super successful, or even women who have built businesses who they've built a business they can't stand anymore. Right. They're outgrown and they come to me too. They're like, I'm done with this. Can I, you know, one of the things I did consciously when I did, um, there, I had this epiphany moment overlooking Madison Square Garden. I'm not going to get into the whole thing yet unless we, you know, happen upon that story. But I told myself, I was like, I, I, I'm allergic to having bosses, number one. <laughs> and number two, I have to, I have to do something that is transforming lives of people worldwide. And I just get up every morning and it feels like play. And, you know, most importantly, it just has to be something that is created around my lifestyle. Like right. I'm living just this amazing lifestyle, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm not working to live as we do in the West or in the United States. I am working to live. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a big decision I made. And I learned that my first few times in Europe, when I was in Paris, when I was in uh, living in Italy, like that is my first and form foremost thing, living an opulent life, a fun life, you know, um, not going into that grind. Like I just, I'm just, I can't, it's just not who I am. It's not in my blood. So I created a business around the lifestyle I wanted. And that's part of what I help women do. 
which is, you're right. It's such a different way of approaching, even like if we go to the fundamental creative power that we have as women, and maybe we're using that to create a business, thinking it's going to lead us to this someday point when we can then live this life we're envisioning versus designing it from the get-go around that vision. I mean, I'm so inspired by that. I think just because I see, I see the other side of it a lot as well with women that I work with or just in our community who, like you said earlier, realize a little bit too far in that they've designed a business that they actually don't love. And then now it just becomes more of an energetic drain than it is a contribution to themselves or the rest of the world. And that can easily happen. Correct. Yeah, it can. And I think it happens to most of us. Hmm. So when you, let's kind of switch gears here and talk about, because I think this is really going to tie in, you know, we could either just look at all the reasons why that is and, you know, what leads us there. I'm more interested in the conversation about like, how do we open up this portal of, and just creativity that we all have within us. And we may not even realize we're not fully tapping into. So tell me a little bit about, especially the work you're moving into now, especially as it relates to our sensuality, our sexuality, like this is, it's something that's often kept separate, but it is all one, right? Creativity all comes from one source. And so I'm really, really curious to hear a little bit more about like what inspired you to dive into these areas, but then we want to go like as deep as you'll let us go into how we can apply this for ourselves too. Okay, perfect. So, wow, that's a lot. So I think that what, what I would like to start with is just giving them a little bit of an idea of actually what I'm, what I'm doing, you know, to get kind of grasp that uh, first of all. So basically I'm a catalyst and usually women come to me craving opulence, like true, true opulence. They want to feel fulfilled. They want to feel on fire. Um, And, you know, they want to be magnetic to these high value relationships, luxury clients, a luscious love life, you know, having these juicy out of this world experiences because, hey, this is just, this is the one life we're living right now. And so what I do is I help activate, harness and amplify her unique value because each woman is as corny as it may sound, she's as unique as a slow, as a snowflake. Mm-hmm. Um, so this unique value, her sensual energies is what we activate and harness and then her sexual power. And I do this using ancient secrets of high value women. And then they come into flow in relationships, business and life. So this is the complete opposite of how we are usually taught to do things with the grind or a lot of energetic or mental hustle to really try and force ourselves to vibrate high. Um, And I'm not saying any of this other stuff doesn't work, but I have women coming to me from burnout. They're exhausted. They're not enchanted by by their work or, you know, their businesses. And so this opens up, we have an innate way of, of tapping into and creating this life in a much more, you know, innately juicy way. Uh, But it's been, like dumbed down or turned off or switched off by parents, society, religion, different things. I'm not going to get into all that, but it, that's one of the reasons why uh, women, and they're so far from it. They don't know where to start. And then they find me (laughs) and then I get really happy. Yeah. You're like, I come, come, come. I will show you exactly where to start. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So Oh my gosh. There's just so much here. I, so uh, practical question. I'm actually curious, uh, the def, the definition or how you differentiate between sensuality and sexuality. How do you distinguish between the two? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay, for asking that question. Ah, because so many people get them mixed up and say it's the same thing and they're completely different. Uh, and sensuality you know, there's different, you know, definitions if you look it up. But for me, it's basically living in this turned on life, all five senses. And I even say the sixth and seventh sense, but that's a whole other story. But it's living this completely switched on life out of your head and in your body. Mm. And um, a lot of times the, the mind, our mind, 
we're trying to make decisions with our mind and we're dominating over the body. And that's when, I don't want to say mistakes because nothing is a mistake, but that's when detours are made and we could have just tapped into our innate truth in the first place. So, but living that turned on life. Um, for example, I'm always the person that it's 20 minutes. I'm, everybody's done eating, including women at the table. And I'm still eating 20 minutes later. It's because I'm savoring every bite. I'm savoring the lights. I'm savoring the candles on the table. I'm smelling, I'm, I'm you know, smelling my food. It's, it's a way that I go. It's almost, almost orgasmic, which then flows into sens- sexuality. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it, then when we flow into sexuality, and it's not even just the sexuality, it's like sexual power uh, that, I, that I talk about using and really ending shame and shyness and guilt because that blocks our desires from being realized, from showing up, this, these blocks. And then there's another part of it that's being like having a sovereign self-image and these three together work magic. And we'll talk about that you know, later if you, if you desire, but... The difference is, you know, sexuality and sexual power has to do with even just our creative energy. You know, um, in Hinduism, it's called the yoni, the the pussy power, if I may say, right? (laughs) Because Mm -hmm. it's creative energy, it's creative power. So it's not just sex, but there's a sex, our organs, it has creative power. Then there's creative energy that comes from it, from our our orgasms and everything. And this is how, you know, in my intensives, I help women use that to portal and create from that space, not from the head. Mm. I'm like, so here for this whole conversation and it's true, right? Like when we can separate or when we, when we stop separating these parts of our life, it, I think it actually does. That's, that's what has helped tap into a deeper layer of your own creative power, like your true power. And I love how you broke, I love how you break it down. I've actually never heard it described exactly like that, especially the difference between, cause I, I feel like every time I've heard sensuality and sexuality, they were used interchangeably, but that idea of living a turned on life being so present, I mean, how can that not lead to more creativity in every single area? So, so good. Um, Okay. So does this tie in with what you mentioned earlier? Were these three areas that you really help women unlock is, are those the three? Cause I'd love if you'd share a little bit more about that, like giving everyone a tangible, right? How can they, this is such a big conversation. You all can see like, this really does need to be like four or five podcasts, but how can we like really equip people with the first level of even bringing awareness to where there may be some areas to unlock. Yes. Okay. So I could actually teach, I'll try to teach a mini masterclass. Oh yes. I'm (laughs) so excited. I'll try to to do a mini masterclass in five minutes or less, or we'll see how far we get, but I'm going to share some of the things from my sovereign, sensual and free intensive that, you know, takes minimum of a day to do, but I'm going to share these three areas, I really call it the three activations that I do with women when I work with them. So the first part, and this is the foundational part that you absolutely must have that most women we just don't have. And it's all about having a sovereign self image. So when we think of a sovereign, um, when I'm sharing with this and I'm mentoring women, the sovereign, she has her realm, right? And in that realm, what she say, says goes. Now, she's also, we're also each woman, we are like a vessel. Like look at us, ourselves as a vessel. And this is kind of like a bit uh, Kabbalistic terminology, the vessel is. But we're a vessel. And you hear people talking about expanding or you know, contracting your vessel. Are you living a big life or are you playing small? So you can think of this vessel and how big is your vessel? Our vessels have, are infinitely able to infinitely expand. The thing is, is that we usually have cracks in them that I call energy leaks, okay? So I know this is we're getting, I'm trying to put too much here. I usually do it a bit slower and no, there's this is more, but- so good. So, okay, so you're this vessel, you can, and then you have these energy leaks and I look at it like this. So for example, uh, this happened this past week. Here's an example. So. Someone, I had a, I had a, 
a, a consultation. I don't even do consultations really anymore, but someone um, on a social media platform reached out to me and I booked some time with them, 15 minutes. And she then, um, I got, I was on my, on my line that, you know, people have to call into and she did not, she was not there. So I texted her and I was like, okay, I'm on the line. And she came back with something and it doesn't matter what it is because as a sovereign in your own realm, you write what I call the decrees and the decrees mean your standard, your supreme standard. And so in my realm, I do not allow anyone, one of my decrees is you you will not waste my time and Mm -hmm. I won't waste your time. We cannot, uh, we just, we can't, we can't get it back. It's an unrenewable resource. You cannot renew it most valuable thing I have. And she said, oh, well, can we push it back? And I said, look, <laughs> this is a non-renewable resource. I typically don't, I don't even uh, reschedule last minute calls. I don't care if you paid or not, it does, or invested or not, it doesn't matter. That is, that is a decree as a sovereign of my realm, okay? So then she replied and got into shape and said, okay, I'll take any time you have after right now. <laughs> You know, Mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that as like, I feel like I'm Queen Elizabeth II of England, but I am in my realm. I am the sovereign of my realm. And I, the women, here's, here's how this ties in. And this is just the first part about having a sovereign self-image. So for example, if I were not this kind of person, Lindsay, and everyone listening, I wouldn't even be on this podcast. Right. Think about that. Lindsay does not interview people who there's, I live in my supreme feminine, then there's the servant feminine. I'm getting, I'm doing, like I said, I'm getting into all these um, things that I teach that I I unfortunately can't, um, you know, we don't have time to share what it is and get into it, right? But I'm living as the sovereign in my supreme feminine, in my realm, my vessel, the energy leaks, like that could have been a potential energy leak had I let her kind of defy my decree, but I do not allow that, right? So I can expand and expand and expand my vessel. And the women who are super powerful that come to me for support, if I have those energy leaks and I'm weak like that, why in the heck should they come and trust me to support them? So do we see how every time we're going back, like some people to call it boundaries, me, it's a decree in your realm, in my business and in my uh, program, it's, you know, a trademark. That's what I teach. So that is the first level. If you don't have those energy leaks stop in all areas of your life, um, you will be leaking everything from money to love to just all types of things happen. And even in your love life, when you have energy leaks, like letting someone disrespect you, Um, it's going to show up in other areas. And that's the first level that I work with women to seal Mm -hmm. all of that off, decide what those decrees are going to be. I have a process to do that. That's really fun. And then she meets her sovereign in the intensive. Each woman has a very unique sovereign that she is and personifies. And I have a way that I take women through. And it's not like one of those um, things on the value you see online, you pick 10 values. That's such BS. I'm so sorry. I, I, I completely understand that it could serve at some point, but we we're, we're deeply unique and we need to really see that and invest the time to, to, to realize that can't just pick out 10 values off of offline, off of a test or something. (laughs) Yes. Okay. So even before you said it, I was so present to how this this is a way more empowering conversation around boundaries. We hear about boundaries a lot, but when you call it a decree, like even just the energy that the words you've chosen to describe each of these areas carries a different power, a different frequency to it. So the first one is that sovereign self image. Then what's the next after that? So next after that, it's having sovereign sensuality, really owning without shame and without, you know, unapologetically owning like all of those senses living deeply in your body. Like even as I speak now, and I have exercises that I teach the women to do as I speak now, <clears throat> as I speak now, I'm even feeling the vibrations through my body all the way down to my pelvic area. As I speak now, it is pleasurable for me to speak now. I live that much in sensuality, deeply, daily, 
at every moment. And then when I catch myself in my head, I can immediately tell and I know how to put, put myself back in my body. And, you know, let me, because during the sensual awakening, so I had a sensual awakening uh, in, in Paris and, you know, maybe on some other time we'll, we'll get into that story, but I just want to share this thing. And so I had a sensual awakening in Paris, I had a sensual awakening in Italy. And when the thing is, when we tap into the power of our bodies, knowing we can unhook it from the head. So I have even realized things and I've helped women realize things. Um, and I don't use manifest because this is not law of attraction. This is not, you know, universal. It's none of that. So I help women realize things by tapping into the power of the body's knowing, disconnecting it from your mindset and your mental, your mental hustle and, and head. So um, you could even be not in the best of moods or state and st still you're still receiving things that you desire. This is, people probably don't realize how powerful that is because mm -hmm. there's so many people trying to stay in this, um, as, the, as you know, one says high vibration and maintain that. But we're supposed to have ups and downs as human beings, as, as women. What do you do then? You can't, you know, if, I feel like it's an artificial way of living and this is much more, more natural. But let me just share something because you asked for the sensual living. So I just want to quickly share. So when I lived in, I lived in different places in Italy. One place I lived was on the Amalfi Coast in Italy. And I remember this like it was just an hour ago. I'm sitting in the square in Amalfi, on the Amalfi Coast. I'm in the square at a, at a cafe waiting for my coffee and a little dessert. And there is an Italian woman about a couple of tables away. And I was mesmerized by this woman, Lindsay. I couldn't take my eyes off her. Mm. So she had in Amalfi, well, actually in the whole Amalfi Coast area in Campania, there's this, they're known for their Amalfi lemons, these huge, fragrant, delicious lemons. So they have a dessert called Delizia al Limone. So it's almost like, um, I'm not even gonna try to, rip, um, but it's a, little, it's a little tiny cake that can fit in your hand that the sponge is made from the lemon juice. Inside there's lemon cream and it's topped outside, it's uh, coated with this lemon whipped cream. Oh my. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> So, so it's, it, and it's a, it's an Italian European size palm in your hand, not half a cake, like in the U S that way. Right, right. And she has this long slender silver spoon with a tiny little, you know, tiny spoon at the end, tiny. And she's taking a bite, Lindsay, and she's eating it and she's savoring it. And then she licks the spoon and she just sits there and her eyes are closed in ecstasy. Then mm -hmm. 30 seconds goes by. It takes her about 15 minutes to eat this. The whole time I'm watching her, because <laughs> it looks like sex, basically, right? Right, <laughs> like that moment. Wow. I'm enjoying it with all fives. I'm enjoying it through her. This mm. is how we should be living. Mm. This is just part of it. And so in, in, in my intensive, I go through just different things like that. I talk about how to use the power portals, and I talk about uh, various uh, African goddesses of wealth and, and sensuality and just how to like, you know, anyway, so I'm going to stop there. Cause I know we, you know, we need, we have, we have time. So we don't have time. So go ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, but it's so even just that the way you walked us through that, that moment for you, I, I forgot I was recording this podcast. I was right there with you. And that's the power of slowing down and being attuned to our senses. I mean, that's something already for me, I'm going to take away from this immediately, but I know there's one more, there's a third area that is part of this process that you help women to unlock. So tell us a little bit about that. Let's like bring this, let's tie it together with the most beautiful opulent bow. <laughs> that. Yeah, opulent's my favorite word. So sovereign sensuality, sovereign sensuality, and this means the end of shame, the end of shyness, the end of guilt, the healing of any traumas we've had, the healing of any religious, uh, you know, and I don't want to say lies, but any <laughs> misguidances we've had religiously about sex. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, and really taking that power back into our bodies and ourselves and owning it. So it's, it's, and owning that, that ability to create that we have as women that no one else 
has, you know, the other sex, they don't have it. And so this sexual power is a creative power. And so I have different ways that I show women how to portal, how to use that, even using the power of the climax or the orgasm. So you can go to the edge or you can go over the edge, but that's not the only thing, the only way to do it. There's other ways to do it without even doing any of that. And you direct that energy and use it as creative power. I use it in my business. You can use it when you're connecting. You can use it when you have a desire you want to bring. You can. Use, it's infinite the use of it. In fact, mm-hmm. um, the, when I, I I taught this to women, and they, um, it was amazing what happened after the intensive. One went down. She had never won anything. Uh, at she lives in Vegas, and she said she's not a big gambler or anything like that. But she's never won anything. And she says during the intensive, she was like Sahara, I want to. Can you, because I activate women. So I have activations that I actually speak out energy into them. And she said, I want to win. So I put that in there and then she won. And then the next day she won again, $1,500, two days in a row. It was just funny um, how powerful this is. So teaching women to live like this. Um, So I almost feel, you know, Lindsay, I almost feel like the doctors who found, um, and I'm not saying this is the end all be all for all women, just the women that, you know, feel it resonates with them and they come to me and then they get that result. But it's almost like someone who solves, you know, or, or comes up with the cure for something and big pharma mm-hmm. wants to shut them down because it's like a mm-hmm. billion dollar. Like I have a bone to pick with the self growth industry because it's keeping women on a treadmill mm-hmm. and I'm here to set women free, not keep them on a treadmill. Mm. It's so powerful. And, you know, it's, it is, it's no coincidence at all that we came into each other's path this year. I have been doing some deep work with different mentors in my life, specifically about some of the pieces you touched on being in the body only to realize, I don't think I had been truly in my own body my entire life up until like I'm 37 right now. And just all of these pieces that you're right. It's, it's such a portal. I love that you use that word to our true potential. And if we try to think our way there, we're missing it. Yep. We're just missing it. You are probably just one of my favorite people I've had a chance to have a conversation with recently. I just am so honored that you're willing to spend the time to have these conversations and really invite women into an experience they might not even know is available to them, whether they're working with you or just really taking these, these pieces that you so beautifully unpack today to explore what might be available for them in terms of unlocking more creativity and more, more of their own power. I'm just really so grateful for you and the work that you're doing and grateful now that, that you're a part of my life, because this is, this is, powerful, powerful work. Thank you so much, Lindsay. It, I mean, it's an honor for me to be here, you know, because I, you know, I love your, your platform and everything that you're doing for women. And it's just, it's absolutely amazing. And I'm honored to now be in that fold and have having been on your podcast. So, and actually now being connected with you even outside of this. So I'm, I'm really excited. Well, same. And uh, I want to make sure we tell everyone where the best places are to connect with you. And you've got some really exciting things in the works. And by the time people hear this in July, uh, maybe even more, I know there's a book in the works. There's so many things. So tell us number one, where to connect with you. And then just what you are most excited about that you're creating right now. So, yes. So basically they can go to um, my website, thehighvaluewoman.com. And that's, you know, a singular, thehighvaluewoman.com. On there, there's going to be uh, the magic and joy of sensual power. So it's a PDF checklist and activation audio. So they can just get a taste and start to uh, start to start living in this freer, this innately free way and energy that we actually have. Uh, that, you know, they can lose the hustle, the mental hustle and energetic hustle <laughs> that they've been in, those who would res- with whom it resonates. Um, also, we've got the um, next sovereign, sensual and free intensive, so they can activate 
the power of that sovereign self-image, sex, sensual and sexual power, using these ancient secrets of high value uh, women that I've discovered living in these different places, doing research and, um, and that's gonna be fun as well. And I'm actually writing a book, um, but using all of, being able to use this as a woman, I'm not gonna say the title just yet, I'm gonna, <laughs> but I'm writing a book and, and how to use this and to create a really rich life as a global citizen and being a global connector and really expanding your, your realm, expanding your influence, expanding your wealth as well, because you've got people that you're easily able to connect in a genuine way. Um, I, I really call myself a master, a master global connector uh, because I can pretty much, I can reach, it's just the expansion that you can have once you're activated as a woman, it's limitless. It really is. Mm. Mm. So those are the things I'm excited about. Well, I cannot wait to continue watching this journey unfold and the, your impact continue to unfold. And uh, this final question is one that I ask all my guests and you're someone I'm really, really excited to hear your answer to this because I, you're so tapped into this this power already. And the question is just very simple. It's, you know, what is a powerhouse moment that you have had recently? And that can be something big or small. It can be as delicious as the woman sitting and eating her lemon, her lemon dessert at the cafe, or it could be you having the biggest win of your business career. Um, it can really be anything, but it's a moment to just acknowledge somewhere that you have, you're recognizing yourself for your greatness and your power. So we just call it your powerhouse moment. Um, what's the first thing that comes to mind when I ask that? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love that question. Um, and it, something immediately came to mind and I always go with what immediately comes to mind instead of, you know, how ego brings up like yep. 20 other things that you, well, like, <laughs> that sounds cooler. No, I'm going to bring up exactly what came to mind. Uh, and the funny thing is that I did this uh, today on, I'm in a, I'm in a high level mastermind and, and um, I had this area that I felt kind of stuck in and I shared my win today and the win was there was a huge financial win to it, but I don't even want to talk about the money. I want to talk about what was going on behind it. Uh, basically one of the, the two people who, who run it, she was like, Zahara, what are you resisting? What are you not doing? And I realized, and I said it today in front of everyone, all 60 people in there online, I said, I realized that I have been letting um, conditioning, some conditionings, not let me embrace, fully embrace my, my spiritual gifts and my power in my own life. And then even coming out to use it, to talk about it, to share it, to say it, to promote it, to talk about it because I came from a very, very, um, you know, restrictive Christian family that, you know, I had to be born into that family to then become who I was today. But that was like, I actually in the last couple of weeks burned off the last vestiges of that mantle that I was wearing and mm -hmm. then was able to activate these women because I put it out there. And now I'm on your podcast is today. So it's like, it's, it's perfect. That's the powerhouse moment, you know, and it's continuing and continuing to grow. So <laughs> that could not be more perfect. And I I'm just so filled up by today's conversation. So thank you again for being here. Ah, I'm so, I'm so honored to be here and, and you're welcome. And thank you for, for having me so much gratitude. And I'm looking forward to uh, hearing how, the powerhouse women listening to this, how, you know, how it changed your life and feel free to contact me. I want to hear from them too. Yeah.